Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Jim Reed. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, first, I just want to say um, extra special thanks to everyone who checked out my first video and uh, for all the feedback that uh, you guys gave me on YouTube and the Guild, I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully I've done a little bit better with the lighting this time. And as you can tell, i got no notes, so I'm winging everything off the hip. Um, if you haven't checked out my uh, first video, uh, which is an introduction to the Descent Journeys in the Dark series, uh, I would su suggest that you uh, go check that out first, and then we'll move on to this one. Uh, this is just going to be part two of six-part series that I'm doing, and this one we're going to just focus mainly on Descent Journeys in the Dark, the core game. And uh, instead of getting really into detail, I only got 10 minutes on how exactly the gameplay works. I'm pretty much just going to show you everything that makes this game fun. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is what the map is going to look like when you first lay it out. There's nothing on the map whatsoever. Uh, it's assumed that the heroes only have a map of the dungeon. And really all that's out on the board are going to be your heroes on a starting lift and a door. Uh, pretty much the rest of it is unknown of what they're going to run into. Um, we're going to assume that you've already got someone picked out as the Overlord, and you've got four heroes playing. And let's take a quick look at those hero cards. The hero cards give you a lot of information. How much health, how much fatigue, how much shield they have, how many spaces they can move. And this gives them uh, their traits. Basically, whichever one has the most dice here, uh, that's where they're more powerful. This is magic ranged and hand-to-hand -hand sword combat. This will give a little special ability and this is going to determine the player's starting skills. The number over here is how many conquest tokens that the Overlord is going to win if they manage to kill this player. So this is only a two, not quite that strong of a character. Uh, they base the game, the stronger that the characters are, usually the more conquest tokens that the Overlord is going to win. Now some of these may not come with the base set. This is all my cards mixed together and Frankly, don't quite remember which ones came with the base sets, uh, but there's 20 of them, unlike 40, which I said in the beginning, uh, that come with the base set. Okay, obviously the game comes with the rule book. What game doesn't? Uh, I would suggest, though, that you go on Fantasy Flight website uh, as soon as you get this game and print out, uh, or at least jot down their uh, FAQs, uh, because there's some errata and some really good FAQs uh, in there that help clarify some of the rules uh, from the base game. Uh, the other thing the game comes with is uh, a quest guide, and this gives you a bunch of uh, different quests uh, that you can use playing the game and a bunch of pre-made maps. Uh, I'm actually just going to be using the uh, introduction quest Into the Dark here uh, as my example. So, like I said, uh, there's only the door, and the heroes start right in this area. Only the Overlord has this map layout. He'll know where everything goes on the map. Not until the heroes open this door will the Overlord reveal this area number one to the players. And same goes for this area. This will not be revealed until the players either open one of these two doors and they find out what is in this area. Okay, in one minute, what's cool about being a hero? Well, heroes get skill cards based on... Um, the bottom of the card here determines what kind of skills you get. I'm using Red Scorpion. She's really liked by Fantasy Flight for some reason. Very balanced. She gets to pick one skill card from each of the categories. She has 300 gold. She gets to go shopping. Your best bet is to figure out your skills and figure out which you're going to go with. Uh, she got increased toughness and didn't really get any melee skills. So I decided to go with a bow, a magic staff, and a little bit of light armor here with some money that was left over. Take a quick look at your item cards. Uh, name of the card, picture, uh, it tells you what, you know, weapon or magic item. Uh, Pierce is a special ability. This determines the surges that are rolled on the dice. I'll get to that later. Two handed, how much, and these are the colored dice you're going to be rolling. One thing I talked about though, and this is what's cool for the heroes, is as they go through the dungeon, they're going to be collecting treasure and this is really how they're going to be leveling up in the game there's three ways of treasure three different uh bronze silver and gold as the deeper they get into the dungeon the better the treasure so let's just say red sonya is getting really lucky she started out with this regular bow she came across some bronze treasure and uh oh she found a great bow 
Higher Pierce. Okay, but wait a second. Silver Treasure Time, a little later on in the dungeon. Bow of Bone, you can see here it's got a better pierce. Less surges, gives you more power. And now she's rolling three dice. Get a little farther on, now you got a gold treasure. And she gets the elven bow. A pierce of four, very powerful. Now she's rolling four dice. This is what he, being the heroes are all about. Going for this treasure. Especially, well that's the expansion. Especially some of this really cool uh, treasure that you get in, at the, the gold level, uh, the treasure chest. Really awesome stuff. About the hero. Let's talk about the Overlord. What? Why is the Overlord so cool that I raved about in the first episode? Well, first of all, these guys. On your turn, you get to move every revealed monster on the board and attack the heroes with it. Awesome. Also, you have a deck of cards. This is the meat of the Overlord's gameplay right here is this deck of cards. I'm going to start out with a few. Each turn, you're going to draw two more unless you have a couple other cards that will let you draw three. Uh, power card. The threat, you're going to draw a couple threat on each turn, one for each hero in the game, usually four each turn. So they're going to, they can quickly add up. So you're going to have a deck of these cards. You're going to be able to play them on your turn. Uh, right off the top of the bat, I have a spawn card. Okay, it costs me five of those threat to play this spawn card. I can spawn two more sorcerers. Very cool. This is how I'm going to get more monsters out on the board to crush the heroes. This number in the bottom corner here of uh, the overload card. I can actually trade this card in and get two threat token into my hand for that. There's all sorts of other cards in here. I can play this to make my attack aimed. It lets me reroll a dice. A lot of spawn cards. Uh, trap cards, which I talked about before. This is paralyzing gas. I can play it. Trap. I can spend five. Uh, when they open the door, I can throw down this trap. Uh, like I said before, the traps really are my favorite cards in the game. Here's a Mimic. It lets me turn a chest into a Beast Man. And the player has to fight the Beast Man and kill it before. Here's another one, Explosive Door. The traps are awesome. Uh, they're really probably one of my most fun things to doing in the game other than using the creatures and killing the heroes off. Rawr. Okay, so the heroes just opened up a, the door, revealing the first area. And the Overlord sets it up. And this is... Uh, what your board's looking like up to this point. We're going to take a quick look at a combat situation. We're going to have Red Sonia uh, is going to attack this beast man right here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is check the, uh, the range. is going to be She's going to need range of two. She decides she's going to use her magic staff this time. So you're going to take a look at that card and see that she's going to roll the white and the yellow dice plus a black one because she has a black dice in her magic trait on her card. I'm going to take the dice and roll them up. Put them in here. Well, she rolled an X, which is an automatic miss. But thankfully, she has quick casting, which allows her to make a second attack. Uh, she could spend two fatigue, so we're going to do that. We're going to re-roll these dice right here. Let's see. Let's see if I can do a little better here. All right, we're going to count that. Okay, so we're going to count up the range. The range here is three, four. That's that's enough to hit him. It's going to do three hearts worth of damage, and then she gets two surges. This is how surges work, is you'll look at your, your weapon, and you'll see that you can spend two surges, and that'll let you add another damage. So she spends both surges, adds the damage, that's four damage. We look at the Beast Man here. Well, the Beast Man has two shields, so it stops two damage, has four hearts, and it ends up taking two damage on his turn. So I'll put two damage markers out on the Beast Man, and it's halfway dead. Well, let's say the Beast Man decided to attack back. He pretty much follows the same rules. He would take the green and the red dice. He would roll those and basically apply the same uh, type of dice roll towards the other attack. That's pretty much as simple as combat is. Wow, this sucks. I can't believe I'm almost out of time already. There's so much more incredible stuff I'd love to tell you about this game. But you know what? Hey, take my word for it. Go out. Pick it up. You won't regret it. Until then... I'll see you in part three. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.